My name is Esme Beaudry, and this song is called Healing Power. It's about two people who have a very strong connection. Thank you so much, Esme. It does feel good to be together. I share with you these opening words written by Teresa Soto. Bring your broken hallelujah here. Bring the large one that is beyond repair. Bring the small one that's too soft to share. Bring your broken hallelujah here. I know that people have told you that before you can give, you have to get yourself together. They overstated the value of perfection by a lot. Or they forgot, you are the gift. We all bring some broken things, songs and dreams and long lost hopes. But here together, we reach within. As a community, we begin again. And from the pieces, we will build something new. There is work that only you can do. We wait for you.
And now it is time for our chalice lighting. My name is Liza Earl Centers. I use she, her pronouns. And Shalini Surya Narayana was going to be our worship associate this morning. And she wanted to share a few words about Diwali. And though she had to tend to a family need this morning, I know she was hoping that we would still share these thoughts from her. Diwali, also known as the Festival of Lights, is the biggest Hindu holiday of the year and it is in progress right now. This fall holiday is widely observed by over a billion people, mostly Hindus, all over the world. It spans five days and signifies the triumph of good over evil and is the beginning of the Hindu New Year. During Diwali and during all important events, we recite, or um, Shalini's family and other Hindus recite many Upash Upanishadic chants. The Upanishads are a series of sacred Hindu treatises that were written in Sanskrit between 800 and 200 BC. So they are literally thousands of years old. Shalini wanted to put together a chalice lighting today that is a combination of um, Upanishadic chants with some UU chalice lighting words at the end. So I invite you, if you have a chalice or simply a candle nearby that you would like to light this morning, you can go ahead and do so as I share these words that Shalini put together for us. Lead us from non-being to being. Lead us from darkness to light. Lead us from death to immortality. We light this candle as a symbol of our faith. By its light, may our vision be illuminated. By its warmth, may our fellowship be encouraged. And by its flame, may our yearnings for peace, justice, and the life of the spirit be enkindled.
please enter into and create an atmosphere of prayer with me this morning. Whether your eyes are closed or your hand is on your heart or any other way to help create an atmosphere of prayer. Spirit of life and love, God of many and all nations named and unnamed, we come to this time and to this place with oneness this morning. We are mindful that we have been suffering great losses in various ways. And we hold in our hearts the grief experienced by many and the uncertainty of the future. Yet we are thankful that our grieving can be shared and is shared and that we are not alone in this loss. We are mindful that the pandemic has caused shifts, adaptations, adjustments from our rituals, our traditions, our lifestyles, our relationships, our everyday lives. And we hold in our hearts those who feel this loss greatly. Yet we are thankful that perseverance can lead to resilience and thankful for the considerations of the safety and health of others and that we are not alone in this loss. We are mindful that our belief in the right to the democratic process has become a struggle. And we hold in our hearts those who have lost confidence and those who have anxiety of the uncertainty of these times. Yet we are thankful for those whose actions, support, and the fire of commitment for justice resounded brightly and that we are not alone in our belief. We are mindful that our loss of connection, actual companionship, that vital connection. And we hold in our hearts those who feel this loss greatly. Yet we are thankful for the ability to keep connected in various safe and responsible ways and know that we are not alone in this loss. As we continue this feeling of oneness, let us be open to the light scattered yet comforted in that oneness. May it be so, amen, ashe and blessed be. Let us now enter into a time of quiet meditation. And after which singing, spirit of life following the time of quiet stillness.
Our reading this morning is a poem by Omid Safi, who is a teacher of Islamic studies. In the poem, Safi uses the word nur, which is an Arabic word meaning light. Where the light enters you by Omid Safi. Broken window, sunlight, light shines through. It was sunset. What colors? I am this window, you the light. We are the brokenness illuminated. The beauty is all of us. This window, the brokenness and the light is all us. We all broken, fractured, shattered, Somewhere in us, there is a healing. The nur comes from beyond. God is the light. The one who gave me the wounds gives the healing. We are wounded healers, illuminated brokenness. Poets and sages tell us the wound is where the light enters you. I look at my own heart and see scars, scars piled on scars, so many deaths, and yet life, stubborn, clings to me. Some see the injury, the pain, the hurt. I caress the scar gently, this is where the healing and the light entered me. The scars tell me I lived through it all and grew. I survived, even thrived. The wound, the injury, and the healing are now all a part of me. I pause now at all the broken windows. Oh, wonder! The broken window of my heart, this scattered light, how beautiful each of us, the broken, the unbroken, the healing, the light, the survival. If I were to look back on my life like Omid Safi in his poem, I could see many broken windows caused by loss of some kind. I remember seeking out my mother when I was 17 and heartbroken to be separated from my boyfriend at the time. He was my first love and it tore me to pieces that he would be more than five hours away at a summer program, even as we prepared to attend college in different states that fall. I collapsed on my parents' bed and lay by my mother's side filled with sorrow sobbing and heaving because the pain was so great. There was the time I was not chosen for a job I had applied for, and not only was I not accepted, but the person who was doing the hiring let me know that I wasn't chosen because of how unprofessionally I had been dressed for the interview. I lost the job opportunity and a little bit of my pride. More recently, there was the loss of growing life inside me when I had a miscarriage two and a half years ago. The grief of that loss burned brightly for many months and is still present now, though it is more softly and dimly casting its light through that broken window. There have been seemingly smaller losses as well, Losing a favorite weekend brunch place and the ritual of waiting in line and ordering the same dish each time. Losing a well-loved book that was left behind in the seat pocket on a flight from Burlington to Chicago. Losing favorite neighborhood walks when I packed up my things and left Albuquerque, then Boston, then New Haven. 
And for many years, there was living through the Chicago Cubs losing yet another chance to make it to the World Series or losing the World Series itself. There were lots of tears of happiness rather than sorrow shed on November 2nd, 2016. Life is filled with loss. And I don't make that statement with a sense of tragedy, although some of the losses we human beings might suffer are genuinely tragic ones. The fact that life is filled with loss is a simple truth. We move through our lives, opening ourselves with love and delight to people and places and things. And when life inevitably changes or doesn't go the way we might want, we experience loss and suffering. We love sometimes deeply and we lose sometimes with immense grief. Loss is almost universally painful though to different deg degrees, depending on who or what is lost. Grief is a natural response to loss with its many varied permutations and colors, phases and movements. Right now with a continuing COVID-19 pandemic, we are all dealing with many losses as cases have surged in just the last week alone here in Vermont and a new set of restrictions is put in place, I know that most all of us are feeling a renewed sense of loss. We are having to give up for now, activities that have sustained us over the last several months, walks with friends, socially distanced gatherings. We are foregoing treasured holiday gatherings with loved ones, some of whom perhaps you haven't seen in months or longer. Perhaps you are filled with anticipatory grief, preparing for the possibility of in-person school being shut down. And more acutely, you are perhaps seeing more family and friends directly impacted by COVID and even losing loved ones to this disease that is ultimately fatal for far too many. The losses in this time are many and painful. Loss can create wounds and scars as Omid Safi writes in his poem. I look at my own heart and see scars, scars piled on scars. What we do with these wounds and scars matters greatly in our healing. We may try to numb the pain of loss through addictive behaviors like drinking or shopping or over-medicating. We may try to push the pain down and deny it is there, burying it with our busyness or being too quick to say we're fine and to move on. Of course, over time, not tending to these wounds and turning away from this pain can lead to problems down the road. Pain untended can find ways to cause further pain and even harm. The Quaker author and teacher Parker Palmer writes, violence is what happens when we don't know what else to do with our suffering. Too many of us have seen and experienced this on a personal level, perhaps in close relationships. And we see this at a societal and global level with violence and war being all too prevalent in our human relations across tribes, ethnic and religious groups and nation states. One of the hardest things we can do as human beings is to face the pain of living and losing with our souls laid bare. That doesn't mean facing this pain without support, but that we are willing to feel the pain of loss as it is. Albert Huffstickler writes these lines in his poem, The Cure. Let the pain be pain not in the hope that it will vanish, but in the faith that it will fit in, find its place in the shape of things, and be then not any less pain, but true to form. Accepting that life is full of loss is a first step in letting the pain be pain. 
As was mentioned during our chalice lighting, we are in the midst of the Hindu festival of Diwali, the festival of lights. The well-known Hindu characters associated with Diwali are Rama and Sita from the epic tale, the Ramayana. There's triumph as they return from a long period of exile and lamps are lit to guide their way back to their village. Diwali celebrates light, truth, and the good. Within Hinduism, there is a lesser known goddess named Akilandashwari, who I also want to lift up today. The construction of this name in Sanskrit creates a double negative and translates to the never not broken goddess. The never not broken goddess. Akilan Dashwari represents the fragmentation and brokenness of human life. She recognizes that our lives fall apart. Yet in this brokenness, the goddess is strong. She represents the ultimate wholeness in the brokenness. An important part of how Akilan Dashwari is depicted is that she stands atop a crocodile, symbol of our human fears of death, of failure, of inadequacy. Somehow this never not broken goddess stands firmly upon those fears and uses them to transport herself through change. We are also never not broken. Healing comes in part from recognizing that this is true Loss and the woundedness and brokenness that result from loss are a basic part of life. Once we accept that we are never not broken, we can turn our attention to the ways that our brokenheartedness is not the end of the story. Omid Safi writes, some see the injury, the pain, the hurt. I caress the scars gently. This is where the healing and the light entered me. As Leonard Cohen wrote and sang, there is a crack in everything. That's how the light gets in. And whether you believe this light comes from a divine source or the mystery of the universe or is simply metaphorical, the light coming through those broken places can eventually, if not instantly, transform our hearts. We may need to filter that light first with cleansing tears or screaming in rage or in quieter and gentler ways, allowing the pain to have words and expression in the light of day through art and poetry or therapy and conversation with friends. The pain of our losses illuminated can shape us into ever more loving people with ever more supple hearts. Parker Palmer writes, suffering breaks our hearts, but there are two quite different ways for the heart to break. There's the brittle heart that breaks apart into a thousand shards, a heart that takes us down as it explodes and is sometimes thrown like a grenade at the source of its pain. Then there's the supple heart, the one that breaks open, not apart, growing into greater capacity for the many forms of love. Only the supple heart can hold suffering in a way that opens to new life. To cultivate a supple heart, we must first recognize the brokenness in all things, the ways that losses remain with us. Then we can begin to notice how there is also light getting through. If we allow ourselves to grieve, to let the pain be what it is and to be with the pain, then new possibilities emerge. Our supple hearts are where we can care for the wounds and the scars with gentleness and compassion. Our supple hearts are where we can receive light and shine it back out brightly. 
with hearts open wide, we can know that we are never not broken and that the scattered light of our souls is beautiful beyond measure. As we draw our service to a close, we extinguish the chalice and carry within each of us its healing flame, the warmth of community and the spark of hope into the days and week ahead. As we do so, let, let us join in saying the mission statement of the Unitarian Church of Montpelier. We welcome all as we build a loving community to nurture each person's spiritual journey, serve human need and protect the earth, our home. you these words of benediction as we bring our time together to a close. May you move through the light of this day from dawn to dusk, knowing yourself loved through and through. May the losses you have endured open your heart evermore to the light that shines brightly within and from your own soul. May you go in peace and return again in love. Thank you.